Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be the Philadelphia 76ers uh, weekly recap plus preview, especially to tonight's game in Toronto. As the 76ers, yes, did fall to the Milwaukee Bucks and did fall to the New York Knicks, but albeit without really anybody in their lineup, and Andre Drummond just bawling out. And really being a huge supplier. Ferk had a good game as well. Tyrese scores in the Yang with 15. Um, and Curry wasn't as sharp in that game. But we found out that's because of an injury that was bugging him, of course. So the Sixers kept it really close. The Knicks didn't really pull away to the end. The Knicks are a very solid uh, club in their own right this year. Um, now at 7-5 and five and 7th in the East. They've been a solid average club this year. And they took advantage of the Sixers not having all their starters in. But the Sixers, on the flip side, played a hell of a game and battled and just showed what this team is made of and how good this team actually is to be able to be that close without your all-star Joe Embiid and to be that close without everybody else that is missing from your lineup in Tobias Harris. Even Isaiah Joe, who knocks down more shots off the bench. You can never have enough good shooting. So you have all these good depth people out. Of course, Danny Green was out for some of the runners back now, but Toby and Joel Embiid especially are two huge factors that you're missing. And then on the defensive side of the rock, Matisse Steibel is a massive factor that you miss for these two games as the Sixers fell to the Knicks and then, of course, also fell to the Milwaukee Bucks. 118 to 109 as Giannis put up 31, 16, and 5. Andre Drummond in that game was good again. 20 rebounds, 3 assists, 17 points. He really stepped in nicely for Joel Embiid in a starting role, something we didn't see Dwight Howard do much last year. Played good off the bench, but whenever you had to put him in the starting role, look at his numbers, they were abysmal. So you had Andre Drummond step up when it came to that. Ferk had a really off game playing 44 minutes, overextending him. Shake Milton had a good game in this game. Tyrese continued to ball out. He has played ample minutes beyond belief of what I think he thought he would have been getting this early on in his career, and he's played them very well and has played up to every challenge he put in his path and is excelling, especially for a 21-year-old point guard, probably looking, honestly, early on like one of the top 10 catch at the position um, in the league to start this season when it comes to overall stats and just how smooth and fluid he's been moving on the court. So obviously now when it comes into tonight's tilt against the Toronto Raptors, uh, the Sixers have Joel Embiid and out for COVID and Seth Curry out, of course, for COVID as well, where when I looked at that injury report, it didn't, or Seth Curry out, excuse me, for his foot injury, where when I look at that injury report, it didn't say Toby was out anymore for COVID as he is not. He is set to make his return tonight. So that is huge. Obviously, you don't expect Toby to bounce right back in and be the normal Tobias Harris after this long layoff and having a battle of, obviously, COVID-19. But he's going to be able to come in, add some good scoring, overall scoring to your team, and also just be one of the bigger presences on the court that takes attention away from other people. Because without Embiid, the biggest commodity, the most known commodity on the court would then obviously be there for Tobias Harris, especially with Seth Curry out as well. Um, so I think the Sixers team, honestly, now really knowing that, I didn't know that until I checked it out and had that live reaction to it, which is always better anyway, that Toby's in the game. I think that sets the Sixers up with how they've competed without him and without Joel with really just about six to seven guys in the lineup. It's really funny in a good way how good this team competed and lost to the Knicks, even in a losing effort um, to the Knicks, plus, of course, as well to the Milwaukee Bucks, that they battled and played their tails off. And that's all you want to see from a team when they're that beat down when it comes to injuries. That just goes to show, once you have one guy back like Tobias Harris, the world can change. And once you have Embiid and Toby in, then you just know what this team's doing. They can click on all cylinders. You have the scoring from Toby, you have the shooting from Seth Curry, you have the overall great fluid play of Tyrese Maxey. And then you have the beast of the man, Joel Embiid, an all-star center, one of the best in the league behind Nikola Jokic, obviously, uh, probably for second best center in the league, but it's still great to obviously be in the top two. And Embiid does his thing. You're not going to have him tonight. 
but we are going to have Tobias Harris. And the Sixers are going to have to when it comes to the other team. Oh, also, Pascal Siakam says is out due to rest, according to this uh, score report. So if he gets put in, then that's just them being wrong. But Fred Van Fleet averages 18.7. He's been a good player this year. Obviously, you don't want to let him get any open shots there. And he's really the guy you mainly have to watch from the scoring with OG Ananobi, the great young player that seems like he's one of their untouchable guys that is also averaging over 19 um, buckets of points per game that he gets. So he's been a very good player for their team. Those would be my two players to watch when it comes to their team. When it comes to the Sixers, obviously a player to watch is Tobias Harris because he's coming back. Yeah, he's not going to come back and probably be the sharpest tool in the shed because he's coming off of a sickness but and a big one at that. But um, he's coming back, and he's a huge presence to have back on the court. You look for Ferk to obviously bounce back in this game. You have to have an off game. You look for Gorge Niang, Shake Milton, and others to just keep doing their thing and keep progressing. The Shake has been getting better and better and seemed to be getting back to his full game speed after the injury each game, and that's a very pleasant sight to see for the Philadelphia 76ers. So this has been a Philadelphia 76ers weekly preview plus reaction as I reacted to the first two games of the week that were losses, but great battles, albeit with missing a bunch of key players. And then I previewed, of course, the game against the Raptors tonight. Everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Let's go Sixers, and let's get that W tonight. Peace out.